Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about background processes. So, this is the big picture of uh, Oracle uh, database server. So, which is consist of uh, SGA and then you know. So, this is this is this is we term this was as instance, and this is the file system. And then we have already discussed in detail about you know what kind of different files that 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 consist of the database how this SGA is allocated and then what are different types of pools and all this thing so in this next in this next set of videos what we're going to do we're going to discuss about all these processes so now let's say uh, you know how do I know what are the what are my background processes that it's running right now there are two ways you can run you can know, know them so let's say for example your SID is ORCL so if your SID is ORCL go to your Unix uh, you know command line prompt and then uh, give the following command which is ps minus ef grep ORCL so if you do this ps minus ef grep ORCL it is going to show all your back all your processes that is running right now on your Unix server and those are basically you know some of those processes are background processes like you know you probably will see something dot underscore s mon underscore p mon okay so those are the uh, background processes the second way is to look at a table called v dollar bg process okay so by querying from a table called v dollar bg processes we can figure out what are the database processes that is uh, running um, right now so to basically uh, show that thing, I have already done that one in my Unix system, and this is what I got. So on my database system, if I do select p address name description from v dollar bg process, where p address is not like 00, zero then it will show me 12 rows. That means I have 12 background processes that is running right now, and it shows all this you know different background processes like you know this is p mon, this is you know dbwr db writer and so on so and then but if you do not give this condition then you will see from v dollar bg processes maybe 145 rows so that means we can potentially configure all these things to run for the database uh, you know background processes okay so, but here in this case i just configured only 12 of them and then now let's so this is whatever we saw this thing you can visualize in a in a schematic way and i have taken this one from the oracle reference documentation and then uh, you know so these are different processes and then you know so these are the file system this is the memory structure and then these are the background processes so in this video we are going to discuss about all these three top background processes okay and then you know next videos we are going to cover this this three or you know this four and then that is how we are going to complete our lessons on uh, background processes so let's try to understand what they do and then know why they are there in, in, in the first place so the first one is pmon okay or called process monitor so process monitor does following things one is that it is going to clean Say, say let's say for example you are uh, you know you know you are somebody is running on your database so that means you know is connected to a SQL plus client and then what happens is that you know for whatever reason this connection is broken okay so then what you're going to do we are going to have you know this client must have a dedicated server process running on behalf of him so if this connection is gone then somebody needs to clean up this dedicated server process which is not required anymore and then this user might have stored some you know something on the SGA on the SQL area and so on then pmon job is to see like you know if there is any 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 process which is uh, you know is limbo or is not doing anything okay or you know so th those processes is going to be cleaned up by pmon and then while cleaning up let's say it you know you know when when this connection uh, disconnected it might have started a transaction but it has not either committed or rolled back then pmon is going to roll back that transaction okay and number two job of pmon so is 
to see like you know there are other processes are running right other background processes are running then check like you know if those processes are running fine or not if for whatever reason some processes got crashed then pmon is going to recreate them okay the pmon basically monitor other background process and restart in case of a crash in case of crash so number three job that PMON does, if it says, for example, for whatever reason, it, it, it detects that there is a problem with the redo buffer, and redo buffer in the redo log, uh, you know, let's say this there is a process called log writer who's going to write from the buffer to the log files. So for whatever reason, if PMON detects that log writer is not doing the job, that is a serious problem, and then it should shut down the database. Okay, so if so, shut down the database in case of PMON detects there is a serious problem that is currently going on inside the database. Okay, so the next thing is SMON. So SMON does a couple of things like it it is called system monitor. It coalesces. Okay, so it coalesces uh, free spaces. Okay, so what does it mean? Let's say we have this is our you know if you, if you remember we discussed about our segment extent and all this thing right so let's say these are the you know there are two extents allocated and for whatever reason we are going to delete and then we are going to remove you know we're going to free the space so whenever smon is going to detect that is a, this is a you know a free extent and then nearby there's another free extent that is also available then it's going to collect together to make a bigger extent so it's going to going to coalesce this free space and then make a bigger extent so that you know so later on this big extent can be allocated okay so therefore like you know so for example we are keep deleting from our employee table so that means we are freeing up the you know blocks and that means you know some part of the blocks is you know some part of the extent is filled and then somebody else is doing just near you know neighboring extent somebody is also deleting something then then SMAN is going to detect those things and coalesce those things to create a bigger extent so that that extent can be allocated at some point of time okay so number two is you know whenever we're going to delete there are two tables two very in you know, a lower level system table called object dollar and so, so this object dollar right so this lower level table contains all those things but whenever you're going to delete those things it may not happen that you know, in the lower level tab level tables that things got deleted it may happen that the low level things tables can contain those rows system one is going to clean those things number three like you know when we have undo segment or redo segment right So, sorry, uh, we have, we have rollback concept. So we are not taught it so far, but we are going to do it, deal it later. So, whenever we have, uh, you know, in the roll rollback segment grows automatically. Okay. So what this SMAN is going to do if we have deleted something, you know, if we do not need anything, any information on the rollback segment, then it is going to go on and shrink the rollback segment. Okay. So these are the couple of things that SMAN uh, is going to provide and then these are the you know three things maybe there are a lot more and then maybe if you whenever you need those things you, you, you might I mean, you might need to go and then read the book so that you will understand like you know what are the other things that SMAN can do. The last process is called RECO or RECOVERER. Okay. So this process is used in the two phase commit. So let's try to understand what is two phase commit. Let's say this is a database and this is another in a distributed system so we have multiple databases right let's say one transaction is initiated from this database so this is say called coordinator coordinator so this is where the transaction starts right but this is a distributed transaction so we just to make sure that this is all you know basically let's say this this is all depend on this d2 and d3 okay so that means we cannot commit unless and until these all these things are committed so in that case what we are going to do this coordinator who is going to start the distributed transaction it will ask the other parties if they are ready if they are 
ready to commit and then all these nodes they are going to say that yes or no if they say no then this is going to roll back but if they say yes that we are ready to commit then all this thing will notify to this coordinator that well we are yes we are ready to commit when they notify that we are ready to commit then this is called prepared state that means all this coordinator d2 and d3 they move to the prepare state means they are ready to commit the transaction and when they are in the prepare state after after they gone to the prepare state the next step is next step is to say commit so this will commit this will commit this will commit and then this coordinator is going to wait for their response that they are actually committed so this is two phase commit phase one is prepare state phase two is actual commit happens but what happens if during after the prepare state you know this guy is going to say to uh, d2 now commit and it waits for the response if he has committed or not if during that time the network connection between these two is disrupted that means this is waiting this coordinator is waiting for uh, you know for d2 to say if he has committed or not since it didn't get back anything then it's not it's just going to wait for them then comes the recovery process is comes in and then check like you know if there is you know in, if, if there are some uh, transaction which which are two phase transactions two phase two phase transactions which is waiting waiting which is which is in the prepared state but never committed so let's say like you know that there may be two cases like you know maybe after some time it's a now recover a record process is going to take over this transaction and it is it can either commit or roll back depending upon if it like you know, so for example it may happen that after some time the network connection is reestablished right and then recover recover process is going to check if he has if the other process d2 or d3 other database d2 and d3 they are actually committed or not if they have committed then all this thing you know so it will it will do a commit here in this coordinator if not then it's going to do a rollback so that means recover a record process is going to you know in case of two phase transaction in a prepared state recover process is going to take care of those transactions and then either it will commit or roll back.